trainer Ben Smith, and I'm a boxer, a bouncer, a body roller, and a believer that we can all be happy. So I'm here talking to John Verge. John Verge. John Verge. I've when did I meet you? I met you about um, a year about a year ago, right? Yeah, and then there were our past lives. Our past <laughs> lives. And yeah, so <laughs> so John has always been Moses to me. <laughs> yeah. John has always been Moses. He will always be the man who parted the Red Sea. When I met John a year a year or so ago, I think we hit it off immediately. But he had a big beard and he was just so wise and he was so Moses. <laughs> you always be Moses to me. So, <laughs> so for now, on, can I just refer to you as Moses? Moses would be fine. <laughs> are, you, <laughs> are you planning on doing any more parting of any seas? Uh, unless there's fish involved, probably no. Really? What that do, <laughs> what that make the fishing like? Like, what, how will that affect the fish? Oh, I can just reel all the fish. <laughs> <laughs> just, just scoop them from the sides. <laughs> just shuffle them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess that's not too sporty, is it? Probably. Well, I don't know. Whatever. You know, you Moses. You do what you want. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> and you can hook him with your staff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a fishing rod. <laughs> Moses, did Moses have a tried? <laughs> you, be careful. <laughs> you, know, you can do what you want. Do what I like. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, anyways, we're, I've been super excited to talk to you about uh, happiness. And, Thank you. And uh, I've had some great conversations with you just on the job site. So, what is it you do? You, I know from my perspective, you do super nice post and beam work. You know, you're, Thank you. you do all facets of construction, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I started out building. Well, first, just let me say that um, <clears throat> the questions that you ask are tough because I don't think I reflect on happiness too much. And I think you do. I think you've got some depth on the subject. So I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to struggle to <laughs> to give good reasons as to why. Right. So yeah, but you, you I'll are do my best. Our conversations have always kind of been fairly fairly deep i think right from day one we've had pretty uh we definitely haven't had the typical construction site conversations yeah. i don't yeah. think yeah i agree so uh, so i think it'll be i think it'll be good and, okay yeah and now uh, you always struck me as somebody that was that was very grounded and happy and sure of yourself and i think that's what i always kind of liked about you from day one so yeah well, I mean, that's, I think, that's how you like to carry yourself on the job side, I think, right? You're, uh, you know, you can tell your focus. You could see that your focus right from the get-go was something other than what construction workers can sometimes uh, portray, you know, rough and ready and talking kind of dumb just to make the day go by quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that definitely, uh, <laughs> yeah. Definitely no shortage of uh, <laughs> sort of, of that, but that's yeah. that's kind of always been my thing, right? And, mm. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, you you know me, it's just like, man, we're building a house, we're not running IBM here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my thing was always people and be happy and let's have fun and mm -hmm. get the job done. But I don't know, you were always, I always that was the thing that I, I I liked from day one was just that you, yeah, were grounded and you were level headed. You did very nice work, but you didn't you didn't get all grouchy about it. You just seem like a happy, grounded person. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. So I always have wanted to hear your views on happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to start, my first question I like to ask people is what, what well, let's, I, I, I like to ask what makes you happy and what just puts a smile on your face? Mm -hmm. So what, what makes you happy? Um, so, I think, um, well, I know that, uh, you know, my family has really made me happy. My, my kids, you know, and, and being with Trudy and having our kids and watching them grow into, into adults and then having interactions with them and as real people, you know, somebody mm -hmm. who it's like, wow, like raising a person is hard. 
(laughs) (laughs) So that makes me happy. And that definitely puts a smile on my face. And I think, I think uh, like good connections, spontaneous connections with people that definitely puts a smile on my face too. Um, You know, like good positive interactions with, with people who you just don't know. Mm. Maybe you won't see them again, which is kind of a shame, but, on the other hand, you know, you did have that moment in time, right? Mm. And, you know, you had a good interaction and a good connection and you were both grateful for it. And hopefully, you you know, it's the little things in life sometimes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think, in a weird way, you know? Do you kind of seek out those moments or do you think it's just kind of an organic thing that happens? You got to, you think you just got to kind of be, open yourself up to those, those moments or? Yeah, you definitely have to open yourself up and I think they are. Organic. Mm. Um, you know, I think they just kind of occur. I think you can look for it too. Mm. Um, and then, you know, if you do get on a mission to try and to try and sort of, you know, uh, meet people, communicate with people, help people, um, that's probably uh, yeah. That that takes time, right? And you know, when we're busy. And then usually, it's funny, usually that interaction with people like that car broken down on the side of the road mm-hmm. or somebody forgot their wallet and they just, you know, they need a little bit of money at the grocery store or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's usually when you're super busy and you're like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> but then when you deal with it, you're like, why didn't I want to deal with yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Huh. So. Yeah, those, those little organic moments that mm-hmm. happen, those are those are the ones that really kind of make up our life, you know, the, the real kind of juice of our life really in the end, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look back, I, I look back, I'm a real reflective person, so I look back on my life and it's always mm-hmm. those things that I just kind of bumped into that ended up giving my life the most richness, you know. Do you record those moments too? Do you keep a journal or anything? I've been a journal all my life. I've uh-huh. been a journaler. You know, I was, uh, because of sports, I was always a, uh, I remember I started running. My dad used to get me up when I was in grade four, like at the crack of dawn, I would go running. And my dad, I remember my dad kind of was the first one that instilled in me, you know, keep running the same distance. I would go out for my little runs and I'd come home and I'd record my times in a little journal. And so that was my first experience wow. journaling. And then I just started journaling more and more as an athlete, lifting weights. And as a boxer, I have all, pretty much all my boxing workouts recorded. Uh-huh. And, and I just kind of slowly but surely became more of a journaling my thoughts and my ideas and things like that. So I've, I've done a lot of journaling over the, mm-hmm. over the years. And it's kind of helped me really to understand myself. Mm-hmm. How about you? No, not at all. And so I think these moments that we were talking about, you know, those positive moments, like, you know, where you make a good connection, somebody at the, you know, just, just because it happened today, the, the woman probably wasn't having a great, a great day checking out groceries. And so I was just, you know, pleasant and chatting to her. And then the lady beside me, she started in on the chat and then the outgoing person, they started talking before you know it, four of us are having a good mm-hmm. laugh. And she's like, oh, that felt better. <laughs> you know, and nice. yeah, yeah, I know it's kind of, you know, and that's at the local super value, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, times like that, you should. I kind of feel like, even though it's not a big significant moment, but yeah. I should keep notes of what happens in my day to day life, so I can reflect back and remember. Yeah, yeah. Do you think? Do you think remembering remembering events in your life and reflecting on those events are important? You know. Well, first of all, I got to say this. I'm going to say this to the cashier. I'm not going to say say this to John. (laughs) Everybody, everybody (laughs) knows that I'm a question asker. Oh, sorry. Not really. (laughs) I'm going to apologize to the camera. (laughs) That's not true. I actually don't mind answering questions. Um, But the ground rules have been set here, John. (laughs) Don't ask me questions. (laughs) Sorry, uh, that's that's not true. I don't mind answering questions. It's just I get so used to it. Like I'm always so curious about people, so I'm always asking questions, and I, mm-hmm. I get I get uh, bombarded once in a while. But what do you do with the information? What does it do for you? Oh, sorry, well, I broke the rule. <laughs> I'm a, I, so your your question was: Do I think about things? Yes. Right? Do I yes. Reflect? 
Yeah. I'm a huge reflector. I'm a huge, you know, my, my life. And I, I mean, I, I haven't really made a huge secret of it that my life, my young life was just nothing but for me, it was nothing but turmoil. Hmm. So I really had to kind of spend a lot of time reflecting and journaling and making sense of things and finding my <laughs> sense of, you know, like, why, yeah, I used to wonder for a long time, why was I even born? Like, this is not fair. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to kind of navigate myself through, you know, the justices or, or what I thought was the injustices of life to find meaning and, and, uh, and find my place in the world and find, you know, my own happiness and my groundedness and just accept the things that I, you know, just the way my life had been. And uh, so I, I was a huge reflector, a huge journaler, a huge writer, and all these things that just kind of gave me the power to heal myself and find, you know, just be joyful, you mm -hmm. know, when as a young person, I really struggled with that. So, so it's kind of a necessity for me to do that, but you're, you're not really a mm -hmm. journaler, are you a reflector? You seem very reflective. Mm -hmm. I've been busy for a lot of years and I haven't reflected as much as I, I think as much as I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, just with building, like being engaged with building our, our house and it was such a big, it, it still is such a big task and my head is down and I'm always trying to accomplish the next goal, you know, the next job. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have an opportunity to sort of, you know, think about the paces you know going through life yeah and i, I definitely miss that mm -hmm. and when i went to university i know i basically spent four years doing that and it was like and and just um sort of like finding what i believe to be really amazing people and doing what mm -hmm. you're doing just asking them mm -hmm. tons of questions <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so in, in, you studied, uh, you did native studies, right? Yeah. yeah. In college? Or yeah. University? Yeah. Native studies and uh, economics. Yes. Native studies and economics, which is, mm. I think we, we were taught. So actually going backwards a little bit. So one mm. of the things that I know brings you a huge amount of joy is fishing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, so fishing, so you're a really, you're really an avid fisherman. Yeah. That's. A, a friend, I know I told you this, a friend lives in Germany. He got me hooked. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the guy's been a great, he's been a great mentor in that sense. Like, never telling me what to get or how to do it, mm. but somehow getting me hooked just through his experiences, but also asking me, you know, have I done anything? Or, or if I did do something, if I did get a rod and go out and fish and, just asking me how, how did that feel? Did you like it? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's kind of how it came about. Mm. Yeah, and I love being in nature like that, doing mm. that. Yeah. So, but you uh, you don't find that a, a kind of a reflective moment? Like you don't reflect a lot, or you pretty much just focus on fishing? Kind of there in the moment. No, not in the fishing. Like I'm not keeping score or anything because I release most everything okay I so i just want to say here <laughs> <laughs> to the camera i'm going to say that's a damn lie that is a damn lie <laughs> because we went fishing a few weeks ago and he caught like five fish or something like that. i didn't catch any and when he said he's not taking store score <laughs> man he rubbed it in he wrote <laughs> a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so so I again I know that's a damn lie, but okay, we'll just let that slide. Right. Right. Um, but you just take license. <laughs> uh, you don't. Uh, so you're not fishing is not a super reflective thing for you, or it is. I think it's an in the moment thing. It's a real in the moment thing. Like I'm pretty cognizant of you know the wind and the clouds and the mm -hmm. weather and the water and. Um, yeah, just the vibrancy of, of life around. Hmm. Yeah. Would you say that uh, from your perspective, that's one of the keys to just kind of being happy is just kind of being in the moment? In whatever it is, whatever your passion is or whatever you do? Yeah, I, I think so. I think, um, yeah, because I think I can remember that question have, has me remembering times in my life where it's like, Oh, you know, 
Why did I go that direction? Why did I go this direction? And, you know, you can't change the past, right? Well, you know, you're, you're constantly trying to evolve mm-hmm. and move, move forward. Um, learn from the past for sure. Correct, you know, correct for the future and have goals. So I guess, um, yeah, I guess I'm probably planning. If anything, I'm probably planning direction through that, uh, you know, through that, that, that period of, of uh, sort of contemplation, even though I'm, you know, the wind and the weather and the waves and, you know, and the odd person that's around. Um, yeah, kind of, I think, I think thoughts will come into my mind about, oh, you know, where are you going to be five years from now? Mm-hmm. And, oh, how are you going to get there? I, I think I'm talking to myself like that mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I know I am. Mm-hmm. Um, so actively engaging like as a, uh, as a, um, a rule of thumb, no, it just kind of spontaneously happens. Mm-hmm. But now that I think about it, I think it should be something that I could work on. It mm-hmm. might help. It might help with direction, you know, because mm-hmm. that's valuable time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you need valuable time just like that you can it. use and like it's a free moment and you like can, when you're fishing, you need, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can use it, right? Like you'll never have that moment in time again. And it was kind mm-hmm. of like as I was driving down today to fish at Bonnie Brook, this I was listening to this guy talk and he was. Um, he was talking about how it's kind of a gift each moment in time is a gift mm-hmm. and it's not a guarantee mm-hmm. and uh yeah and then what you do with that that moment is fairly important too mm-hmm. yeah <clears throat> <clears throat> okay so you know you you say family and so i know fishing gives you a lot of joy family is obviously kind of the number one thing for you yeah i get a hell of a laugh from my kids they're, yeah. they're hilarious <laughs> as adults yeah. so mm-hmm. how uh how would you say can you say hell you? on this podcast can you say what we can say hell on this podcast we can swear dude you're moses you can say whatever you want right, Don't, good. Did you, okay did you come up with the commandments or what <laughs> <laughs> or let that go <laughs> um <laughs> so uh so we know mm-hmm. that uh Family is a big priority for you, and that's a big source of your happiness. But how would you say your your happiness is your view of happiness has changed over over time? I know you've had some pretty major, major struggles to get through. Yeah. So you've definitely hasn't been an easy road for you. But uh, no. how uh, how would you say your view of happiness has changed? <coughs> um. Ooh, I think um, a lot of times it comes as a, as a gift, you know, if you can be, so my view of happiness, so if I wake up and, you know, I go through the day and I work, and, uh, you know, and communicate with the people in the world that I, you know, I work with and people that I live with is in my family and, um, you know, and my my head hits the pillow at the end of the day and sort of nothing went majorly wrong or sideways. <laughs> and, you know, like I've got, I've got health. It, it feels like, wow, I didn't even have to plan that. <laughs> so I don't know what that, that says. Um, so I don't know if I'm actively planning happiness. I don't know if that's answering the question. It's, it's kind of a funny thing. It's almost like sometimes where you were born and, but I think that's absolutely, I, I definitely make, think that's a big thing. I do? Yeah. Well, I kind of think that. Uh, oh, sorry, I asked Ben a question. I was <laughs> asked him, do you? <laughs> well, I think, I think, again, you know, I mean, just uh, from my perspective, I think, you know, the way I like to view it is like we're all kind of like, if you look at the universe as, a, as an ocean, it's a very big ocean we're all just cups taken from the ocean and you know like a dipper full a dipper cup from the ocean and that's our lives that's all our individual lives and you can't control that cup that comes out of the ocean but you're we're all connected we're all the same ocean we're all we're all the same just different in our own way and we mm-hmm. are we are who we, our cup is what it is and it's what we make out of that cup that's everything we have freedom of choice we have freedom of mm. what we're going to focus on we're going to have freedom of what we're going to do with the, the cup that we are mm-hmm. and in the end we're going to get 
assimilated back into the ocean. But, mm. but uh, so I think that, you know, we, my view is that we are, we start where we start, but we do have choice, right? Mm-hmm. It's just some of us, you know, the choices are a lot harder to make if you're, you know, you're situated, you're depending on where you start, right? But I think we have a responsibility to, you know, like we've been given this, this, you know, where that, you know, that dip in the ocean, as you say, I like that, and I like that analogy or that metaphor, I guess. Mm-hmm. It metaphor. Um, and uh, yeah, so I guess we probably have a responsibility to be happy and, and, and convey, and, you know, and try and convey that positivity to other people. Mm. Yeah, I don't, well, I think I that, uh, I think that, uh, is responsibility not a good word? Well, it's a great word. I mean, I, <laughs> but you and I have talked about that before when we were fishing that, yeah. You know, I mean, you can be a drain on everybody by being grumpy and being, yeah. you know, being negative and looking on the downside of things, or you can be a positive light, you know, by being happy, looking on the bright side of things, making the most of things. And, and the reality is, and again, we've talked about this before, that, you know, I mean, you if you can be a light to people and you can make somebody smile and you could be positive in, in every situation that you're in, you, you're helping the, not just yourself by being happy, not just that person, but you're helping the world. You're creating a better world with your happiness. All it takes is for all of us to just be a little bit kinder to one another, a little bit more compassionate, a little bit gentler to ourselves and to one another. Mm-hmm. And then we're changing the world. We're change, shifting that, that social consciousness that we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I think you're changing the world when you're happy. So Tell me that's have, not a deep concept, a eh? social consciousness. Shifting social consciousness? Yeah, that's like a deep, deep ocean. <laughs> it's a deep, it's a deep yeah. ocean, but I don't know. I believe it's, it's not even that hard, really. I don't believe yeah. it's that hard. I believe it's inevitable, but I think it's people like you and I and, and everybody who kind of, for the most part, is, is kind of positive and bringing being happy and finding joy and spreading that joy and being, you know, I think that's what it takes for enough people to get on that train, right? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's a big, uh, like it's a, it's a task, not a task because that sort of sounds like something that isn't, you know, something you have to do, but you don't want to do. But it's like, um, yeah, it's almost like a, a necessity, you know, a way that, yeah, a way that we need to, a way that, because I know when I go onto the job site, you know, whatever job site it is, you know, I know there's going to be people I'm not going to want to bump into Mm. and, you know, the rock and roll is blaring and I make sure I don't just yank the plug out of the wall, but I ask politely, (laughs) maybe it could be turned down a little bit because I just can't think sometimes. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So. (laughs) <laughs> I think that's probably helpful, right, to people to be that way, like to, you know, maybe ask and yeah. communicate with them. Or, well, I think it's uh, you're you're a very good communicator. You're very, very good at kind of being gently uh, motivating. Um, but don't you think that that that's you get more flies with honey or bees with honey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For I mean, sure. Just on yeah. the job side, um, yeah, in the world sure. in general, right? So I think, uh, yeah, like we said, I think, like we were talking about, that shift in social consciousness, which I think is where we're going, or which I personally think is inevitable, and that's how we change the planet mm-hmm. and make it this, you know, incredible, you know, mm-hmm. utopia that it can be. I like it when you talk about planet, because when I hear that word planet, it does it makes my mind kind of wrap around all the continents, you know? Yeah. Hey, it's not just Gibson's, but it truly is the world, isn't it? It truly is the world. And, yeah. and I think that it's... Especially if you've traveled a little bit, right? Yeah, I haven't yeah. traveled a lot. And neither have I, but where I've been, I, yeah, I yeah. know that, you know, if you keep that, you know, that air of what, you know, what we've been talking about, yeah. it, it's, it's helpful. Yeah, for sure. I mean, people uh, are the same everywhere, right? It yeah. doesn't really matter where they're from or 
people want to sort of everybody wants to be happy everybody wants to feel valued everybody wants to feel that they matter everybody wants to feel safe i mean those are those are 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 just straight across the board every every human being wants those things mm-hmm. so i think if we can through our own happiness and through our own groundedness and through our own mm, acceptance, if we can kind of emanate that all the time through every interaction and every conversation and every every moment as much as we can, then it builds and it grows, right? Mm, and be conscious of that, right? And be and be conscious of the fact that everything that you do, <laughs> yeah. every say, everything that you say, and every yeah. interaction that you have has consequences. Yes. Yeah, right. I mean, it all has consequences. Uh-huh. I mean, you're either you're either being a drain on society, yeah. or you're being you're uplifting society. Yeah, you know, or you're super neutral and you're doing nothing. Yeah, but you got to choose something. One of those three, right? Kind of. Do you yeah. agree? Uh huh. Yeah, I see it as that for sure. Yeah. And yeah, uh, you have the uh, yeah, you have that ability, right, to make that day. Yeah, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we all do. We all have that ability to kind of choose, you know, you know, it's a rainy day. Am I going to be, am I going to be grumpy about it? Or am I going to look on the bright side? Somebody is being a dick to me. Am I going to see the fact that maybe I don't know the circumstances. Maybe their mom just died. Maybe their kids just, well, something happened to them. And I can, I can express compassion that maybe I don't understand their situation. All I know is that right now they're not being their best self. Mm-hmm. And I'll just leave it at that and try to help them not be a drain on them. I mean, we can, we all have choice, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I have this list of questions <laughs> I like to ask people, but we've got a bit of a tangent. <laughs> He's got them written on his hand. <laughs> yeah, I do. This is how I got through high school. <laughs> <laughs> and all in between his fingers. And I know, but the problem is, I got these sweaty ads, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh, it's, it's, like sponge. it's all sponge. It's all sponge. Ah, oh, man. Did you, uh, <laughs> did you have the commandments on your hand? I handed directly to him. Oh, really? Yeah. And then they went right to the tablet. Straight to the tablet. Yeah, it's just, you know, CNC machine. Well, Lasered it in. Yeah, life's a lot easier now. Like, so when you forget those commandments, you have to like lock this big tablet. Right? <laughs> yeah, you just look on your phone, and right? It's like exactly. times have changed. Times have changed. Let's take a picture of that tablet, right? right there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now shall not steal. <laughs> um, so, back to the question. Back to the seriousness. Um, so, do you think people are generally happy? in general like when you're kind of going about your days do the people are happy and if not do you think why if like why or why not i think people in busy north american society are preoccupied Mm. i think there's a lot to you know there's a lot to that keeps us buzzing around Mm. and uh, it's you know i don't know that we're a super reflective society Um, you know, and I think, I think because of the, you know, because of the intensity of, you know, of our society, I think, yeah, the, um, uh, being aware, consciously aware, right, of the journey and and what it could be, um, we seem to lock ourselves, like, could you picture commuting from Abbotsford into Vancouver every day and then back out? You know, I mean, the, the intensity of driving on the highway for 90 minutes, um, how, like, you know, and that's, that's easy. I mean, mm-hmm. but again, it, it kind of depends on <laughs> like, you know, how you, how you view that because yeah. I mean, that's 90 minutes to yourself. That's 90 minutes to think about, you know, your life and to think about, you know, whatever, whatever makes you happy. I mean. It can be what you make it, right? It could be like this super stressful 90 minutes of like, oh, God, I'm in mm-hmm. traffic. Or it could be 90 minutes that nobody's bugging you, nobody's calling you, and you could just daydream, mm-hmm. basically, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that's all I go through my life. That's all I go through my life. Ben's driving on his motorcycle <laughs> up the median right between the cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> but I mean, it is what you make it, right? Like yes. that. 
that could be the most precious 90 minutes of your life. Like, I mean, I, yeah. I spend probably 90 minutes every morning just chilling out, staring out the ocean. But really, what's the difference between that and being in your car or driving? If you know you got to do it every day, why? I mean, I'm mm-hmm. not saying that, that I might not be like, oh, traffic. Mm-hmm. But it is an opportunity. It depends what you make it, right? That's true. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I guess, you know, referring back to that uh, fellow on the radio that I was listening to, you know, talking about moments in time as gifts. Mm. Um, yeah, so really, really uh, developing those those moments, you know, those minutes. And, uh, yeah, trying to make something worthy of them. Mm. Yeah. So you think... Uh, what was your question again? <laughs> My question was, do you think generally people are happy? And if not, why? But in your answer... What I got was, well, you think in North America, people are generally a little bit too distracted and they're frustrated with the 90 minutes that they got to commute to work and traffic and the distraction. Yeah. That's kind of what I heard you say. Yeah. I wonder if that's too, like, that's too simple. Um, I, I would say, I would say, uh, yeah, like people people on the lower east side like living on the streets can they experience do they have happy moments in the day true happy moments in the day absolutely yeah and because they're people right because they're people and i think yeah. it just i think it, it just really depends on what you make of it. i mean i had a good friend of mine who was yeah. who was an amazing boxer he was a legendary boxer in vancouver amazing pro one of the best pros that came out of north america mm-hmm. in the 70s and 80s and great coach he was one of my boxing coaches but he had a drinking problem and he ended up on the street a few times and the last time i saw him was a while back but he was homeless on the streets of hastings and you know he had a grown daughter and he was in his 60s then he had a grown daughter and he had a good family and he made a lot of money and lost a lot of money and he just he wanted to be on the streets. He was just happier there. He was an alcoholic. It was in his blood, and he was a happy street pen. Wow. It's so yeah. People, you know, people do funny things and people yes. do strange things. But yeah, who are we to judge? Eh? Yeah, who are we to judge? I mean, I think <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of different situations down there that you can't really put a blanket. Yeah, you know, I, I used to go down there quite often, and give out clothes and food, and yeah. like I grew up wow. not that far from that that area, and I spent a lot of time in that area. So, I, I, oh, really? that area has a, holds a kind of pretty special place in my heart, mm-hmm. that Lower East Side area. Mm-hmm. But uh, I would go along, I would just chat with people, and you know, maybe you know, whatever, you know, just mm-hmm. give them some time and and talk to people a little bit, and mm-hmm. and. Uh, and everybody is worthy, and and mm-hmm. and yes, they can. You know, everybody. If I don't know, everybody can be happy. Yeah. Everybody ha- can have moments during the day of happiness. Nobody, nobody, nobody chooses bad circumstances for themselves. But mm-hmm. you can. I think. I think you can always find a way to kind of make the best of the situation, and slowly but surely get yourself onto a better footing. Mm-hmm. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree. Yeah, yeah, and and I think um, in that you know, do I think? Yeah, I think probably we don't realize just how uh, positive people can feel, you know, during the day. Mm. Um, maybe we don't see them at that point, and so we think, oh, grumpy person, and mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. their life isn't that happy. But what do we know, right? So mm. maybe we have to assume the best. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like give the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think that uh, mm-hmm. mm. I think if we all try to see our potential in one another, and yeah. maybe maybe overlook some of the the negative moments or negative things or the things that don't look so pretty right now, and try to look a little deeper and see the potential, the yeah. potential that we all have, and we. And the commonality of like, I mean, we all love our kids. Yep. We all, and it's how we raise our kids too, right? Because we overlook their their garbage as best we can. To yeah. Try and make them the great people that, that you know we hope they'll become, right? 
Exactly. Yeah. So if we can do that to, you know, in our family, that's something that we should extend to society too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. See the best in, like yeah. we do with our kids, see the best in everyone. Yeah. Try to guide everyone along. And Yeah. 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 So, um, I keep getting off track of my questions. But that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I don't have a I don't have a hard fast script here, <laughs> okay. but I do have I do have questions. So uh -huh. so my 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 last questions were, okay. were which we were just going over were do you think people are generally happy and if not what do you think is the solution? So could we come up with an answer to that? What do you think is if people are not generally happy or to enhance people's general happiness? Yeah. What do you think is the key to that? Mm. yeah so like we have educators in society you know we probably need like an attitude of mentorship mm -hmm. people actively helping those people we encounter that are having maybe having difficulty you know um doing what you're doing and I think I've learned, you know, I haven't known you that long, but I think I've learned a fair bit from you in the sense that, you know, you've got this positive outlook and you're not going to take no for an answer. And that's good because I think if you don't let people deviate too far left or right, you know, you kind of, it's okay to be focused on something like, you know, being happy, being positive. Mm. Um, try and find that one point in your day, you know, where you can get there. <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, you know, experience that joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we kind of owe it to ourselves to mm. to try and be happy because, right? I think so. We owe it to ourselves to be happy, like you, yeah. like you said earlier in our conversation. Because yeah, I mean, otherwise, what what is the point? Mm -hmm. What is the point of any of this? You know? and, yeah, I remember thinking, oh, Ben's gonna you know, ask me these questions about being happy and. It's all about happiness and look at all these people in the world, you know, that are like, you know, in such dire straits, right? Poor developing countries. And you gave me that one, um, you knew somebody from Cambodia who had lived through the, mm -hmm. the killing fields mm -hmm. and you talked about that. So that's like one of the worst possible scenarios you can find yourself in as a human being, right? Mm -hmm. And yet from that has come this person with this attitude. Mm -hmm. Which I, I think I, I don't recall it exactly, but I think you said, "Look, if they can come away being a semi-whole person and a mm -hmm. happy individual, then anybody can." Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, mean, I like that. I like that positivity. Yeah, I just think everybody, you know, I mean, it just depends. We are, you know, we're going to live our lives, and things are going to happen. But it just really depends on what you, you know, what you make of it. You know, I, so many people. They're so worried and they're so fearful. In my, from my perspective, I see, I hear, I listen, I listen to people, and I take it in. I hear people so fearful, fearful about money, fearful about losing their health or losing this or losing that or not measuring up to society standards. So uh -huh. it's like so many people are living with fear when, when really, I mean, I remember thinking as a kid. I see now, now <laughs> you, you magically the magic of Moses is turning this into like, like you know, you're interviewing me now. But maybe I just have a camera hog. But but I remember thinking he's a camera hog. <laughs> it's true, I have a camera hog. Look at me. <laughs> but he looks good on the camera. Look at the guy. King <laughs> Um But I remember being uh -huh. a kid because my life was so Fear was everything. I was afraid every day to just wake up. I was like, oh, my God. I cannot wake up and things another day. Wow. So fear was a big thing for me. And I remember thinking. I don't think I've ever known that. Yeah. I, for me, that was, that was basically my life growing up. And, and I remember thinking, wanting so badly to be fearless. Mm. And uh, so and I thought being fearless was being strong and tough and and so nobody could mess with me no more. Mm -hmm. And then I got to that point of fearlessness. And I was like, yeah, what? Well, there's more. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I struggled. Were you with, there? You made that too, right? Like, oh, for probably. sure. There was, there was a time <laughs> in my life where I physically yeah. I felt, I felt honestly, yeah. absolutely fearless. Cause I was working wow. rough bars and, and I was boxing, but I was, 
working in real tough bars and I was fighting all the time. And, yeah. and yeah. honestly, I don't think my, I could be facing 10 guys or five guys. And I bet you my heartbeat barely even went up a bit because I was just fearless. I didn't care. Yeah. I didn't care. But I, and I thought that was fearlessness, but yeah. it's not. Real fearlessness, as I learned through like trying to find identity and trying mm -hmm. to find stability, financial stability, stability in relationships, ability, like mm -hmm. real fearlessness is faith. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Real fearlessness is is having faith that, you know, tomorrow the sun's going to rise. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow mm -hmm. will be another day. And somehow, some way, mm -hmm. things are going to work out. Yeah. And nobody's getting out of this alive. So yeah. let's not try to take this too seriously. And maybe you don't measure up to Joe Blow down the street, but who gives a rats? Yeah. You know, like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. In the end, it's going to be fine. And eventually, our cup, which was taken from the ocean, mm -hmm. will assimilate back into the ocean, and all will be fine. Yeah. And I think when you reach that state, which I've I've worked very hard to get to where most of the time I, yeah. I try many, to be. I know I'm not supposed to ask questions, sorry, but <laughs> how many years did it take? For me to get to that? Yeah. Um, well, I would, I'm 47 <laughs> now, and I would say the last six or seven years I've been most of the time that way, but it took me probably... Yeah, you know, I mean that's a long, that's a hard question. I mean, yeah. I was yeah. very young when I wanted to be fearless, but when that um, that uh, kind of spiritual that that level of faith that was probably took me a good um, fifteen years, yeah. fifteen years to kind of reflect and make sense of things and fall on my face a little bit and mm -hmm. just like like realize that you know what, no matter what happens, no matter how bad things get. You know, life will go on. It yes. will be fine. Yeah. I will always be able to, like, there will always be air to breathe. There will always be, um, you know, there will always be opportunity. Yeah. So that's faith. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think I really learned. I mean, I don't think I had the intensity um, of that knowledge. Like, you know, the positivity and the joy you know, and the dedication to happiness. I don't think, I know I definitely don't have it like you have it. I think it's very present in your mind, right? Mm. Because it jumps right out quick. Um, I think I have those attributes. I think they're definitely there mm -hmm. in my mind. I don't think I think about them as much as I could. And um, I think that, uh, so that 15 year journey of yours, right? So I've had children for 30 years. Mm. And I think, yeah, it's been a 30 year journey. Mm -hmm. And I'm still not there, but I think I'm, you know, in raising those kids and going, look, you know, looking at myself, going, you have to mature here, you have to mature there because you've got to help these guys be productive humans, mm. right? Um, you know, humans that are going to go out and make a difference in the world and ultimately help people. It's kind of how we raised our kids to be humanitarians. Nice. <clears throat> as best we could, right? And, you know, and I don't think that message always got across, but, you know, we tried through our words and actions. Mm. Um, yeah, but it's something you actively have to work at, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Make that choice. Yeah, make that choice, right? And then stick to it and in a fearless way. That's a that's something I learned here tonight too, is be fearless in your um in your approach, right? Mm-hmm. Well I think fearless if it's, yeah. Fearless is like I say, for in my opinion, is faith. Faith that tomorrow the sun will come up and you know, things will fight one way or another, things will be fine. Mm -hmm. Fairness in your faith, yeah. Mm. Mm.